Oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me again. Let me light up first. Okay. <laughs> you don't mind, do you? All right. Hello. My name is Trina. I'm a medical cannabis patient who is thirsty. I partake of cannabis and water. <laughs> on a regular basis for PTSD, arthritis in both my knees and ankles, social anxiety, anxiety, I say anxiety, <laughs> anxiety, menopause, dyslexia, and a few other conditions you can learn more about through watching the previous shows on this channel. This is the Productive Cannabis Connoisseur, a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients like you and adults 18 and older, like maybe you also. <laughs> So, one day we'll get to this point where I, I don't really have to say all that. Well, it won't be a big deal. But until then, <laughs> I make sure I do this introduction on every video on this channel. That way people know when they get here, they're not deceived. Or, um, yeah, you know what I'm saying? They don't just happen upon the channel. Because they didn't, they clicked on the video, but they didn't see that this channel was dedicated to medical cannabis patients. So. All right, so as I said on part uh, one, I'm smoking a combination of two strains. One of the strains is Durban Poison and the other one is Green Crack. I don't like that name. Um, I, I am going to really start saying GC instead of Green Crack because it's insulting. So I'll show you what I got some crumbs left on there from the joint that I rolled. And uh, it's enough to make another joint actually. But I think I'll only smoke one for this series of videos so blessings to you all and thank you coming on back to part two Woo. that's good only one token was needed there Rita Marley is right sometimes all it takes is one draw <laughs> It's an interesting combination I got going on there, too. All right. Screw it. It's going to be two draws. Maybe three. Maybe four. <laughs> it just tastes so good. I'm going to do three, okay? <laughs> Hope you guys caught part one. If not, please do. And if you want to donate to this channel, you can go to my PayPal, my Google Pay, or my Cash App. In exchange for your donation, I can create a one-of-a-kind piece of artwork for you like this. It's a bottle doll. Or I can create a video this on the topic of your choosing. <laughs> But that's it. Ah, let's get on to it. Mm -hmm. I feel so much better that that tooth got extracted. Yeah, I'm just, I just had to say that, man. And woman. I'm just, yeah, I'm glad about that. I'm glad it didn't take that long. So I'll, I'll talk more about that on another video. Like, moved in now what? I just wanted to wrap up the, um, the review that I'm doing for Orange is the New Black. Going character by character. Each character that I'm picking out profoundly affected me in, a, in, a, in so many ways. So, um, and as I've seen the comments for all these videos, these characters have affected you too. And um, a lot of them are very lovable characters. They are. So, um, Fig is one of those characters. She is very lovable. At first, she just comes off as seeming like a sex pot and just switching around and wielding her power and not really caring. She just wants the money. You know, she's all about the money. And so, um, later on in the, in the, uh, in the seasons, in this show, she very much matures. 
she becomes more aware of how these women are really living. And um, at, towards the end, it was like the end uh, season, the last towards the last season, I believe, it was showing how um, they made her in control of ICE. You know what ICE is for immigration and all that? So she was in control of that. She had to go to that building and work there. And um, it's a really sad, tragic story that happened with this woman that was a prisoner. She couldn't speak English. It seemed like some sort of indigenous language. Um, nobody understood her. They just, the, the uh, guard that was, you know, in charge in that area, you know, told her either you speak English or, or Spanish. And she didn't, she didn't, that was, n neither one of them was her native language, it was obvious. Um, come to find out, the woman was trying to tell her, tell them that she was, she was sexually assaulted by one of the guards, and she's impregnated by him, and she wants to get an abortion. But she couldn't explain it to them in, in English, or in Spanish, because she's not, I, Neither one is her first language, so, um, cut to the point where she, um, uh, Figueroa learns about what happened to this prisoner, and so she takes it upon herself to, uh, find a pill, like the abortion pill, to help her. She does that, but the weird thing about Figueroa in this situation, that was a really sweet thing to do, but the really weird thing about Figueroa in this situation is that, um, at the time of all this going on, she was... She was pregnant. She worked hard to get pregnant because it wasn't easy for her to get pregnant um, with her uh, boyfriend, Joe Caputo, which we'll get into his character soon. <laughs> He's a handful. But she was, uh, she, she is too. She's a handful too. They both are. But she was like, um, she was just changed by that. Seeing this woman, couldn't speak English, but she was sexually assaulted by someone and she was trying to reach out to somebody, anybody, to help her. Because she didn't want to give birth to a child born out of, like, as a result of rape. You know what I'm saying? So, um, she helped her out. But then she, then Fig, decided she didn't want a child. It's just weird. She got pregnant, but then she decided she wanted to abort her child. And I'm like, okay, that was nice that you helped that woman. But that doesn't matter in your case, because you two are two different people. You're not in jail. You're not in prison. You didn't get assaulted by somebody and end up pregnant. So what are you doing? Her character is just, like, bizarre as you know what. It doesn't make s It makes sense based on how she uh, grew up. But it wouldn't make sense to anybody else unless they knew the details of that, you know? So yeah, there's that is a very unique character. I'm not going to talk much more about her. But she did definitely do a 180 towards the end of it all, towards the end of the actual um show. She did and um very unique character. You know, there's one interesting part I have to I have to just mention before I jettison on out of here is that she um what was it? Her husband who was running for, I think, governor or something. <laughs> Turns out he was having an affair with another dude. And when she found that out, that really devastated her. No, it wasn't her husband. Yeah, it was her husband. It devastated her, and that's why she ended up, you know, leaving her husband and going and started dating Joe Caputo, who, um, he's a very interesting character, too. <laughs> that's why I said I wanted, I wanted, yeah, anyway, I'm not going to tell you what I want to do. I'm just going to do it. But yeah, thank you for joining me for this two-part episode for Orange is the New Black. I'm taking each character that I found stood out to me when I watched the TV show and trying to really see the psychological mind F that Hollywood does with people to get us hooked on these kind of shows and you throw cannabis in the mix. I have to say again what I do admire about Orange is the New Black because they didn't show cannabis as a big deal. It was the other hard drugs that they were really shunning the most. So, bravo for them for doing that. But it's just a reflection of the time because more and more Hollywood is going to try to give us what they think we we want to see. You know, so they're going to be more lenient and more observant of the over 
over uh, abundant amount of stereotypes that they present before us of people who partake in this natural sacred herb. You know, this natural sacred herb wasn't just, it's not, didn't sprout out from the rap culture. It didn't sprout out from anything. It sprouted out on its own. When you plant the seed and the seed gets planted and the plant grows for the benefit of those who want to partake of this medicine. So that's what I think about it. Thanks for joining me. Brightest blessings to you all. If you want to donate, go to my PayPal, Google Pay. In exchange for your donation, I can create a one-of-a-kind piece of artwork for you. Like one of these little stash jars. Yeah, this one's mine. This one's, I've had this for a bit, but I like making small ones. And I think that's one of the reasons why, um, well, I'm not going to go there. I want to find some more uh, small glass jars and uh, make smaller ones. Because most of my stash jars are pretty big. Like, like say, this one. It's a tall one. That's the one I'm currently using right now. Um, yeah, and not everybody has a ton. <laughs> or not a ton. Not, every, not everybody wants to carry a big stash jar. And so a lot of people want to carry something that's convenient like this. And it's nondescript and nobody knows what the heck it is. So it's less likely to get stolen. That's the reason why I put skulls on here too, by the way. Is, is that way because it'll prevent theft. People will think twice before opening something that looks like this, okay? Seriously. And, um, yeah. Because when, um, when I send out my art that people buy from me, I like to make sure I have uh, some sort of herbs that I can put inside of the box so that nobody messes with the box, opens it up, and tries to steal what's in there. I'll put like some ro a ton of rosemary on top, or if I have lavender, I'll put some lavender in there, whatever I can find. That way, it's safe. It, ha it, comes, it comes from my hands, and my creation is uh, then yours once you buy it, and I want to protect